Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? How was your Thanksgiving? Are you still lethargic from all the turkey you ate? I bet you are. <laughs> I'm put, we've, we're filming this before Thanksgiving. I'm planning on having a lot of turkey. So I'll have to check in with you and let you know how we did with our Thanksgiving dinner. There's so much to be thankful for. I'm glad you're able to join us this morning, digitally and in person as we're gonna be meeting on Sunday morning. I'm Paul, I'll be your worship leader. I'd like to give you a few announcements of what's going on here at Sudley. Advent Sermon Series. It's Advent. Uh, wait a minute, I blinked, it was spring, I was uh, getting ready for summer, and now it's Advent. What's going on? Advent is a special season where we are invited to remember the coming of Jesus, as well as to anticipate the second coming of our Lord. Today, Pastor Sung will bring his Advent Sermon Series God's timing with the message in his time Kairos. We're gonna find it. We're gonna learn some Greek today. I'm excited Where we will explore how God makes all things beautiful in his time. I think it's gonna be a timely message <laughs> Sorry uh, Christmas poinsettias the poinsettia orders and payments must be received by the church office before this Thursday December 3rd so payments and your, your order forms must be put in by this Thursday December 3rd Call the church office if you need an order form, and one will be emailed or mailed to you. Wednesday nights, we aren't slowing down our discipleship program for the youth and children. We believe that God has called us to train the next generation, so we're doing that actively. Children, December 2nd, from 6.30 to 7.30 that Wednesday night, come having already been fed. Some of you may still be full after Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll be at the church. Parents and Guardians, a Bible study led by Pastor Sung and by myself while the children have their program. Last time we met was such a sweet time. We're going through the book of James. I'm telling you, the hunger of some of these parents, the questions they were asking, the questions we were asking, it, it, was, it was a give and take. It wasn't just pastors talking down to people. I look forward to these Wednesdays. Please come if you are a parent and you can come. It's going to be awesome. Youth, December 9th at 6 p.m. Christmas party at the home of Belinda Hess. Contact me at my email address if you have any questions about what's going on with the youth, with the Christmas party, and all that. I'd be willing and happy to answer that. All right, big one, ready? Christmas carols and hymn sing-along. Saturday, December 19th, 2 p.m., Sudley Church will be singing Christmas carols in the church parking lot in your car. That's right, if you don't have a good voice, we don't want to hear it. No, I'm kidding. You get to stay inside your car and sing at the top of your lungs, stay safe, but enjoy some beautiful Christmas music. And we get to join you in our cars. It's going to be wonderful. The lyrics will be available for everyone, and the music will be played over your car radio station, 90.5 FM. 90.5 FM. Bring your own hot chocolate and blankets to keep warm. Contact Craig at his email address if you have any more questions. We want a big turnout. We want to pack the parking lot with singers and hot chocolate drinkers. And hopefully you don't do both of them at the same time. It's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to that event. Now, as you know, since today is the beginning of Advent, it is my pleasure to light the first Advent candle and to say a prayer. We light the candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Would you join me for an opening prayer? Heavenly Father, we enter into this Advent season happy, excited, full of joy, even when our circumstances may try to dictate to us to be sad, depressed, worrisome, fearful, confused. Lord, if we're in Christ, we're promised to be a new creation. We're promised to have a new nature. And that new nature is not full of sorrow because Lord, you promised us you did not give us the spirit of fear and doubt and worry. You gave us the power of love, of self-control. Lord, we want to tap into that nature, that spirit that gets us through these difficult times. God, I will not set my eyes on what's here on earth, but I'll set my eyes on what's above, the hope of a nation, of a planet. 
God, we love you and we thank you that this morning we can join you in worshiping your name above all names. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. everyone. I hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Did you eat a lot of food? I know I did. I wanted to talk to you guys about time today. How many of you guys can tell time? Go ahead and raise your hands. That's great. Did you know that there are many ways to tell time? You can use watches or clocks. Even the seasons tell us what time of year it is. What season of the year is it right now? That's right, it's fall. How do we know that? Well, one way we can tell is that the leaves on the trees have changed colors, right? Or they've fallen off the trees, hence the word fall, right? Well, I think God shows himself in every season of the year. In the fall, he gives us the leaves. In the winter, the snowflakes. In the spring, the new flowers. And in the summer, his lightning bugs. Aren't those all amazing reminders of God? Yeah. As you look at the leaves and the snowflakes, the flowers and the lightning bugs, I want you to remember that these are God's special way to remind us that he's with us in every season and every time of our lives. Isn't that good to know? You know, God does a lot of beautiful things in his own way and in his own time. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we know that you are always with us no matter what season or time of our life. In the Bible, you promise us you will never leave us alone. Thank you for your promises and your reminders that you're always with us. Amen. Thank you, Katie. Now I'd like to lead us into the prayer requests that we have for this week. We have a prayer request for Vicki Runyon. Uh, health issues and family financial challenges. As we shared with you last week, we're taking up a love fund for her, but we also wanna pray for healing for her and uh, just joy and peace for that family as they go through this. Prayer request for Jack Messer, healing from a foot injury. It was so good to see Jack in person last Sunday. He was wearing a boot, but he was in high spirits. God is uh, healing that foot, both for his sanity and for Dawn's, as she has to be his nurse during this time. Let's pray for her as well. And prayer request for Noreen Eckstein, healing from severe neck pain. And uh, Noreen, I, I feel very strongly God wants to touch your neck. Mm -hmm. I just really pray mm -hmm. and I see that happening. So would you join me in a, in a prayer and then uh, for those, and then we'll 
close the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you hear us. I thank you that you are a God that is not distant and far off and uh, allowing chaos to happen without your hand. So God, I lift up these prayer requests for these, these people that are so loved by you, these family members of ours here at Sudley. We pray for healing where there needs to be healing. We pray for peace where there needs to be peace. We pray for joy and blessing financially where there needs to be a breakthrough. God, we join in just believing that we can cast our anxiety upon you because you care about us. We claim those promises and we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples in agreement. And we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from two New Testament passages, some of my favorites. The first one is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It's such a good promise. It says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 says, Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rain. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul, for the special prayer this morning. so the church family and friends who have an opportunity to minister to one of our church member families Vicki Ronyan and our sister and her family are facing financial challenges especially covering uh, Vicki's medical bills so we'll surround the family with our praying hands and at the same time we are collecting a love fund to support them so please write your checks to Sudley UMC with the memo, Love Fund for Vicky Runyon. Your compassionate heart, your prayers and generous gifts will be greatly appreciated. And this is the time to share love with our sister's family. Uh, it's a great news to share. I heard from Cindy who coordinated our Christmas Operation Shoeboxes. We collected over 72 shoeboxes. Great job. <laughs> Can you imagine the children all around the world receive the gifts and then they open it up with that excitement and receive the love of God and the prayers even from our own child here, right? Our own children send their prayers to other children on the other side of the world. This is amazing a mission project. Thank you so much for your support and prayers. Should we take a moment to bless our offering before the Lord? Lord, you are the ultimate owner of everything. You are the author of our life and our history. Enable us to live our life according to your master plan and purpose. We desire to bring glory and honor to your name through the way we live, through the the way we spend our time, our resources, our talents. Allow us to experience that deep sense of fulfillment and joy that comes from you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and watching over us. We desire to take time to give thanks to you and counting our blessings and remembering who you are and what you have done for us. Whatever this offering is used, let your glory be manifest. The love of Jesus Christ be experienced and celebrated in multiple tangible ways. All for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Waiting is often tedious and hard on us as we wait to hear of the result of our medical tasks and application 
competition or decision making, we often become anxious and nervous, right? And sometimes we lose patience along the way. We even pray to God, Lord, give me patience. Please hurry up in answering my prayer. <laughs> so nobody likes waiting, especially in today's world, when we are so accustomed to instant gratification. Everything should be quick and fast and faster. Can you even imagine having that slow Wi-Fi internet connection? Tell me about it, right? <laughs> Especially younger generations are not given opportunities to learn to wait and even appreciate the time of waiting. Our instant culture religiously trains us to become irritated, impatient, and frustrated as we wait. At times, we reach the point of unleashing uh, our temper tantrum. I still remember how I spent my time as I waited to hear from my district superintendent about my first church appointment. I was anxious and nervous to hear from my district superintendent. And while I was waiting, here am I, right? Here I am, right? Thinking of all the worst case scenarios. What if church were not available for me that year? What if nobody would like me and welcome me that church? You know? I was just torturing myself with all the worst case scenarios in my mind. In retrospect, I realized how vainly I attempted to let my personal agenda and timetable override God's agenda. As a result, the waiting time was stressful and unpleasant when I actually could have enjoyed that time with excitement and anticipation. In our faith journey, how often we attempt to fit God's time to our schedule. When our prayers are not answered as quickly as we want, we become impatient. Without hesitation, we complain about delayed answers. We just go to the heavenly customer service, right? Complain. And we doubt and even question God's promises for us instead of making intentional effort to wait for God's time. At times, we are so demanding to God, our Heavenly Father, as if God had to work according to our schedule and our plan, while we ourselves so easily neglect honoring God's time with our life. In the first century, some Christians appear to become lukewarm and impatient about the coming back of the Lord since it was delayed, unlike their expectations. Second, Peter 3.8 says, But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not warning any to perish, but all to come to repentance. <laughs> this is a very powerful reminder. How often we become so impatient with God, right? When our prayer is not answered quickly as we want it. We just get impatient, we're grumpy, you know, we're complaining, but God is patient with you and me. Two millennia ago, Jesus Christ came to the world to open up the door of salvation for us through His death and resurrection. And the Lord will come back to complete what He started and began. On that day, the door of salvation will be permanently closed. For those who accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, that day will be the joyous, glorious day of salvation. But for those who reject Jesus, that day will be that dreadful day of judgment, the doomsday. The Bible testifies that God is patient with us, desires everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible tells us again and again is that Jesus Christ will surely come back to complete and fulfill His promises. Thus, we are invited to wait for whose time? God's time with patience. James 5, 7 says, be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. 
The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Did you hear the word be patient and patient? <laughs> the Lord is inviting and challenging us to wait for God's time with patience, for the Lord's coming is at hand. The Bible testifies at God's appointed time, Jesus Christ was born to the world. The interruption of God into God's own creation took place exactly at the time according to God's plan. The first Christmas was orchestrated on God's timing. God knows our urgent need for salvation and God intervenes in our life in His time and in His way is marvelous in our eyes. The Greek word chronos designates a length of time, a span of time, meaning an ordinary time we experience, it's chronos. Compared with this word, New Testament introduces very important, I mean, one important Greek word, kairos. Kairos literally means an opportune or appointed time, a special designated time. What is interesting about this word kairos in Greek is, is that the New Testament writers use this word kairos in referring to the decisive moments in the life of Jesus Christ. His birth, His death, His resurrection, His coming back. Jesus says in Mark 1.15, The time is fulfilled, the kairos is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Romans 5, 6 says, While we were still weak, at the right time, at the Kairos, Christ died for the ungodly. And the Apostle said in 1 Timothy 6, 12, Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about the second coming of the Lord, which he will bring about at the right time at the Kairos. He who is the blessed, only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Ah, everything in the life of Jesus Christ took place according to God's special designated, appointed time, Kairos. Our time is not God's time. God's time is different from our time. God is the creator of time, and God is beyond our time. God knows what is best for us, and when is the best time for us. God's timing is always perfect, because God sees it all, and sees it through. Our eyes are short-sighted, and bound within the limits of time and space. We cannot go farther, we cannot see farther enough. But God is not bound within the time and space. God sees it all. What is important to remember is that our God who interrupted history for our salvation through Jesus Christ in God's time and who will come back to bring what He started to completion in His time through Jesus Christ intervenes in our life here and now. Did you hear that? The God who worked through Jesus Christ in a mighty way in God's time works through our life in God's time. When God interrupts our ordinary time, that moment becomes holy moment, God's appointed time. Kairos, isn't it? Ah. When God moves, God has special plan and purpose. As somebody said, God never moves without any plan and purpose, right? So when God interrupts and interferes with your daily schedule, your ordinary time, 
take it as God's invitation to God's plan and purpose. God moves with a certain purpose and plan. Get ready to make necessary adjustment to God's plan. Stop whatever you're doing or planning to do strategically, right? When you feel God is interfering, interrupting your daily schedule. Take a moment, readjust your time, your schedule, everything according to God's timetable. Believing that God's timing is what? Always perfect. God is inviting you to God's amazing work in your life. So adjust your time to God's time instead of trying to fit God's time to your calculated schedule. Let's learn to wait for God's time, Kairos, with patience and anticipation. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. God who has a promise is faithful to keep his promises, right? Our Lord is a faithful God and steadfast. The Lord will fulfill his promise for our lives in whose time? In God's time, not in our time. In God's time, Kairos. So why don't we wait for that time with patience, resilience, perseverance, ah, stubborn hope? that God will fulfill God's promise for you, for your child, your marriage, your family, your church, our nation, and God's creation. John the Baptist, or John the Methodist, if you like, <laughs> was given a task to go before the Lord to prepare His ways. Do you know where he waited? until he received the word of God, John the Baptist waited and waited in the wilderness, patiently and expectantly, trusting that God's promise would be fulfilled in God's time. And John the Baptist eventually received the word of God, began to fulfill his vocation as the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, right? Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Again, God's timing is always perfect and accurate. So learn to wait for God's time with patience and anticipation. Romans 8.28, one of my favorite passages. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Isn't this what faith is all about? Even when things don't go the way we expect, even when our prayers are not answered, some of God's answers are delayed, even when we do not see the tangible fruits out of our efforts, our labor, our ministry, can we still determine to wait for God's time, Kairos, with patience, anticipation, believing and knowing and convincing ourselves, right, that everything works together for good for us who love God, who are called according to His purpose. <sighs> Psalm 69, 13 says, But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love. Answer me. And this is a powerful prayer and remind an example before us he was saying like, Lord, this is my concern. This is my prayer. This is my prayer request. You know even what I need before I ask. But answer my prayer at an acceptable time. Means in your time. Now this is powerful, mature prayer. Lord, this is what I want. I want you to help me, rescue me out of this problem. You help me to strengthen myself and so that I can go through this. But not my will, but yours be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Your will be done in my child, my marriage, my family, my church, my nation, as it is in heaven. Shall we pray this prayer at an acceptable time, Lord? In your time, answer our prayers. What happens to those who wait for God in God's time? 
Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Aha! <laughs> Those who wait for the Lord, wait for God's time, kairos with patience and anticipation, will walk and not faint, run, not be weary, even mount up with wings like eagles. Woohoo! We are fly. Dog, I'm talking fly. <laughs> Hallelujah. I serve the uh, Register Chapel United Methodist Church in Stafford my previous congregation for seven years until I got appointed to Sudley this year. When I went there about seven years ago, right, I noticed that Redster Chapel was blessed to have a, a huge reservoir for fishing for people. Population in Stafford near Quantico and Fredericksburg was increasing and growing. So there are huge reservoir of fishing for people. And the church was blessed to have a good church facilities with ample parking lot. Ah, you know, it's a good, large enough to accommodate so many vehicles on Sunday mornings and special services. And a group of dedicated individuals worked hard for the Lord. So back then, as a pastor, new pastor to their congregation, I counted my blessing. Lord, thank you so much. You finally answered my prayer. You sent me to the church with the full potential. <laughs> Then I soon noticed what was missing, the power of the Holy Spirit. All the external logistical like, you know, factors were in place, but one key element was missing, the power from above. So with this awareness from early on, I tried to pay attention to the spiritual condition of the congregation, tried to help ignite the spiritual fervor and passion to the Lord. Year after year, I found myself discouraged and frustrated, losing my passion for ministry gradually because I did not see the tangible fruits I wanted to see and taste as a result of my investment, my time and energy. I poured out my heart, my soul, my prayers, my passion, all the insights or experience or training I got, I just poured it out for the church and I didn't see the fruit I wanted to see. No matter how hard I tried, even we tried at the church leadership a congregation, nothing much seemed to change or move. It was an uphill challenge. Then curiously, about six years later, I began to see a, a tiny little spark. <laughs> If you rush to, to pass by, you may not even recognize that tiny spark, but I begin to see a little tiny spark for spiritual ignition in the life of Register Chapel. For some reason, more and more individuals express their interest in their prayer life. They wanted to learn more about prayer life. And for some reason, some of our church leaders even called for congregation-wide prayer vigils, inviting others to be more active in their prayer life. I was like, what is going on, right? And some of more dedicated individuals even took the initiative forming an intercessory prayer ministry team, inviting others to join them in their Wednesday morning prayer service, which is still goes on even today. I didn't initiate the you know, I just, you know, I was a little bombarded with that disappointment, discouragement, and then this happened about six years later. Along the way, we celebrated nine adult baptisms. Just last year, seven adult baptisms, and this year until I left, two more adult baptisms. Let me refresh your memory. <laughs> adult baptism is a, an endangered species in today's world. I'm telling you. You know, big church, large church congregation may say like, hey, pastor, we just celebrate 100 people. For small congregation, celebrating one adult baptism a year is even rare. We celebrate nine. For some reason, the visitors, the seekers came to church, asked for baptism one after another. So I spiritually sensed that as the church became a warm incubator with prayers, 
God, our Heavenly Father, sent His spiritual toddlers and infants to the church for spiritual care and nourishment. I felt like God was patting me on the shoulder. Well done, son. Well done. <laughs> in retrospect, I realized things happen in God's time. It took six years, can you imagine that? Even to see that small little spark for spiritual ignition, which led to celebrating saved lives, nine adult baptisms. Over the years, I was the one who got frustrated, impatient, irritated. Although when I could have waited for God's time with hope, anticipation, and patience, I learned that important lesson recently. So I don't want to repeat the mistake again. I want to and determine to wait for God's time, Kairos, with patience, knowing that everything works for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's holy purpose. So my subtly church family and friends, shall we learn to wait for God's time, Kairos, with a stubborn patience, joyous hope, knowing that God makes all things beautiful in His time. In His time, in His time, he makes all things beautiful in His time. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time. All God's people said, Amen. Uh, shall we take a moment to center ourselves on the presence of God? I want to invite you to close your eyes. I'll lead you into the prayer time together. Time to be with the Lord. Being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses from heaven and earth. It's a blessing to have this prayerful and worshipful time together, especially after Thanksgiving week. We give thanks to the Lord for who He is and what He has done for us. And we give thanks to the Lord, remembering that all things work together for, good for us who love God, who called according to His holy purpose. I want to invite you to open your heart to the Lord Open your heart, your soul to the Lord. Have that sincere desire in your heart to experience God's touch and, and presence and movement in your life. God intervenes in your life, in God's time, in your God's way. When God moves, when God interferes with your daily schedule, take it as God's invitation to God's holy purpose. Do not ignore it or neglect it. That a special kairos, special appointed, designated, and decisive moment in your life. That is the opportunity for you to feel closer to God, draw near to God. Make yourself available and flexible for God's request at any given time. When you spiritually sense that God is knocking on the door of your heart, take it as a God's special opportunity, God's special time for you to join the Lord in His holy work and purpose. How impatient we become with the Lord, especially when our prayers are not answered. Some of God's answer to our prayers are delayed. We get frustrated and impatient. But God is patient with us. Wow, what a comforting message from the Word of God. Our God, our Heavenly Father, the Savior, the Redeemer, is patient with us giving us one more day, one more week, one more month, especially under this pandemic. The Lord wants us to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The Lord wants us to wait for God's time. Kairos, with patience, resilience, 
anticipation, expectancy. Should we open up our hearts to the Lord and lift up our hands to the Lord and pray to God? Pray to God for your soul, for your child. Who's going to pray for your own child, your own grandchild? You are the one who are given that vocation to pray for your own family, your spouse, your child, your grandchild. Utilize fully optimize your spiritual vocation as a prayer warrior, the leader of your family, and asking the Lord to bless you and bless your child, your family, your workplace, our church, our nation. We ask the Lord to help us wait for God's time, Kairos, with patience, with anticipation, knowing that all things work together. Forgive for those who love our Lord, who called according to your holy purpose. Blessings upon your sons and daughters, Lord. Blessings upon your sons and daughters, Lord. We will wait for your time. We will wait for your powerful intervention in our ministry, in our lives, in our family, in our workplace, in our church, our nation, your creation. Help your sons and daughters stand up together in solidarity with each other, especially under this pandemic. Help us to encourage and sustain each other. Help us to pray for your powerful intervention in our church, in our nation, in the history of the world, so that this dark hour may be turned into spiritual awakening across the country and the world. We will experience your power at work in our lives across the country, Lord, the world. Allow us to commit everything to you, knowing that you will define the moment. You will shape and reshape your creation according to your plan and in your time. Help us humbly wait for your time with patience and courage and hope and trust in you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us all the time. Thank you, Lord for loving us no matter what. Lord, we love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Since I came to Sudley and started a Thursday morning prayer service with Paul, I got very passionate, especially when I pray. <laughs> and some of you attended our service last Sunday, right? Wow! Do you remember that? How powerful it was! <laughs> the servant of God helped us to move to a new height in our spiritual condition. We had a Pentecostal Methodist revival gathering last Sunday. Guess what? This movement will continue. We'll wait for God's time together with patience and anticipation. One concern I have as a pastor is that some of us may not participate in this spiritual spark and ignition which is happening in the life of Sudley. I want you to be part of this movement. I want you to be attentive to your prayer life. I don't want you to be left behind. Let's go together, walk together. I'll be right next to you. I will encourage and sustain you as you join us in this powerful prayer movement ignited by the Lord and our Holy Spirit. All right. Enough preaching today, all right? <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Uh, I just uh, hope and pray that you will stay safe and secure uh, during this week. Hope to see you again next Sunday. Yeah, the church is quite a safe place. You can come out and check us out, and you will experience the powerful prayer mo uh, movement together. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and wait for God's time, Kairos, with patience and anticipation, knowing that all things work together for good for you. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the steadfast love of God the Father, the joyful fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Mm -hmm.